So welcome to the incline track experiment. This is what things look like when you first log into Zoom. And at this point, the operator has already given me control. That means I can actually operate the equipment now with this screen. Now, one thing that you'll notice is over here on the right hand side, we've got the equipment and there's a little cart on a track and we're going to be able to move the track up and down. One thing that you'll sometimes notice is that the track will move up and down by itself. This is a little trick that we use to keep the battery from turning itself off. So don't worry about it if you see things move on their own. Now down here at the bottom, we've got two cameras. So there's a camera one and a camera two. And if I click on camera two, it shows me a different view. Click on camera one again. Camera one has six different presets. So those are these buttons down below. So the main one is what we're looking at right now. If I click on preset two, it zooms in on the cart and the launcher. If you click on preset three, it's going to show you the other side of the track, which might be interesting if you want to watch the cart bounce off the end of the track at the end. Preset four shows you this sign, which we are going to need later. Preset five shows you a protractor and preset six zooms in on that protractor. We aren't actually going to use this to get the angle of the track. There's a better way to do it. But I will use this just to show you that over here, you can, for example, tilt the camera up or down, or zoom in. So I'll go back to the first one. And now I'll show you how to actually use the equipment. So over here on the left hand side, there is this slider. Here you're going to use this to set the angle of the track. And you probably want to use a fairly high angle, just you'll get better values that way. And you'll notice that when I move this up, nothing happened to the equipment. That's because you actually have to click this go to position button to raise the angle of the track. So now you see it moving. And the cart should not automatically launch like that. So if you see that happen, it's OK. What you do is you go down to the bottom again. So that will lower the track. And we're going to need to capture the cart. So the cart rolls back. We just let it do that. And down here in the corner, there's this capture button. So let's click that, and that is going to capture the cart. So let's start over again. We raise the slider bar up, then we click go to position. And this time the cart's not going anywhere because I have captured it. And we're going to want to release the cart and take data. So to do this, you'd click on your graphing tab. So that shows us our graph. And now I'm going to click release. So I click release and it's releasing the cart and simultaneously it's taking a graph of this. Now this is a distance versus time graph, so it should look parabolic. And these weird things you're seeing at the end are actually the cart bouncing off the end of the track. So once you've got a nice looking graph like this, then you want to switch to the velocity tab here and it should look nice and linear. And you want to get the slope of this graph. So that's this value down here. And you also want the units. And of course, a slope is going to be rise over run. So it'll be the units of the y-axis divided by the units of the x-axis. So meters per second per second. In other words, meters per second squared, which means this is an acceleration. So now that you've got your acceleration, you're going to need to measure the angle of the track. And for this, we need to look at that sign. So we go back to camera preset 4. And that zooms in on the sign. And this is going to tell us the length of the track and also the reading of the track when it was level. So you need those two quantities, but you're also going to need to get the height of your track right now. So for this, you go to main camera two, and that's going to show you the edge of the track against a ruler. So you can now read what the height of the track is currently. And this is a centimeter scale. So you would read this as accurately as you can. So to me, this looks like it's about at 37.25, but you read that as accurately as you can and come up with an uncertainty for it. And that gives you all of the information you need to do your calculations. Now to get things set up for the next student, go back to main camera one and preset one. And then you want to go back to the track controller tab and bring the track all the way down and click go to position. So you move it back to this end of the track, and then it's ready for the next student. Good luck with your experiment.